Okay, so this is the final video covering content from Chapter 5 and we want to bring together the three different transformations we've had a look at um, and add in that layer of being able to make a decision or a judgement about which transformation is going to be appropriate and which one is going to be best. So um, this is an image from your textbook um, which is called the Circle of Transformations and from this we can um, at least have a starting point as to which transformations we should consider. So if we have um, data curving in this direction here as we see in the top left, any of these three transformations should work. So applying the square transformation to the y variable or the log transformation to the x variable or the reciprocal transformation to the x variable. If the data curves this way, okay, then one of these two when either of the squared transformations is appropriate. We need a stretching transformation, not a compression. Um, that will only um, exacerbate the shape we're seeing. So either the squared transformation applied to the y variable or to the x variable. If our data curves this way, these are our three transformations. Reciprocal transformation to the y variable, reciprocal tra uh, log transformation to the y variable, or, x, or squared transformation to the x variable. And then if our data curves this way, we've got four options that might um, will all linearize it to some extent. It's about which one um, linearizes the most. So um, reciprocal transformation to the y variable or log transformation to the y variable or log transformation to the x variable or reciprocal transformation to the x variable. Okay, so let's have a look. We'll work through an example that's worked at, um, that's been worked for you in your notes and then we'll have a look at one ourselves. Okay, so let's have a look at the following data set. I've got that entered into my CAS over here on the left. If I insert a data and statistics page and we have a look at that um, scatter plot, so X variable versus Y variable, we're seeing, as we can see in your notes, that the, the data curves in this direction. So if we go back to our circle of transformations, that's this top left, okay? So that means it is one of these three transformations that we're interested in. So we want to then investigate those three transformations and find which one gives us the best correlation. Okay, so that is the squared transformation to the y variable, log transformation to the x variable, or reciprocal transformation to the x variable. So those are listed here. So we'll then consider each of those transformations. Okay, now let's go back over to our data. I'll, I'll do the work in the CAS here and then we'll have a look, talk through what the notes say. So let's set up columns to allow us to do each of those three things. Okay, so I'm going to need a y squared column. So y squared. I'm going to need a, a log x. Okay, so we're going to need, sorry, I hate this non qwerty keyboard, I'm so slow, log x um, column, and we are going to need a reciprocal x column, y on x. Okay, so in my um, formula row, so this column is y squared, so equals, um, we want the y variable squared. Here we want this to be equal to log of the x variable and in this column here we want it to be equal to so equals 1 divided by the x variable, reciprocal of the x variable. Okay so we've got all the data we need in our spreadsheet now. Okay all right so let's go back over to the data and statistics page. So I've had a look at the scatter plot of my original data. Let's put the regression equation here. So menu 4, 6, 2. Again, making sure you've got the diagnostic switched on so you're seeing R squared. Um, just for those of you that still haven't done that, menu 6, make sure that diagnostics box is ticked. Okay, so we're seeing that the linear regression with no data transformation at all, coefficient of determination is 0.81, so it's pretty strong, but we want to try and get the best possible model that we can, so our predictions are as reliable as they possibly can be. Okay, so we then want to have a look at each of these three transformations. So the first one is looking at y squared versus x. So now that we've set up all the data in our spreadsheet, it's very easy to make these comparisons. So I change my y variable from y variable to y squared, Okay, so we see the data become more linear. 
we see the regression equation now is this. We're seeing it on screen and I've got it written over here in your notes. y squared equals 808.6 plus 1539x. And the coefficient of determination for that is 0 0.9404. Okay, then we want to have a look at the y versus log x. So we'll change our y squared variable back to y. And we will change our x variable now to log x. So again, more linear. Uh, we're getting a better coefficient of determination there. So the last one was 0 0.94, this one's 0.97. And so this equation is y equals 20.28 plus 111.7 times log base 10 of x. And the coefficient of determination is 0 0.9743. Okay, so that's certainly an improvement. That's the best one so far. It's better than the squared transformation to the y variable. And then the last one we want to have a look at is the reciprocal. So leave our y variable it is, as it is, reciprocal of the x variable. So it's going to flip around. All right, we've got another equation again because it's not about x. It's now about 1 on x. Um, and we've got a coefficient of determination of 0.9539. Okay, so here's our equation. y equals 138.7 plus 140.6 times 1 divided by x. But the coefficient of determination is not as good here. So this is our best coefficient of determination up here. And so therefore, this one would be our best model. Um, and so therefore then if we wanted to make any predictions, we would use that model to make the predictions because they are the most reliable um, predictions um, on the basis of the strong coefficient of determination. Okay, we've got 97% of the variation in Y can be explained by the variation in X in, when we use that equation. So that's definitely the best model. Okay, so let's work through that process with our own um, set of data. So I've already got it entered in. Just let me open up that data set. Okay, so here's the data here. Let's have a look at the scatter plot. We can see it in the notes there, but let's get it drawn in our CAS. So let's have a data and statistics page. Let's put our X variable in the horizontal axis and our Y variable on the vertical axis. Okay, so we've got this shape. We've got some sort of bending at the end there, but we've essentially got, I'm oh, sorry, I forgot I can't draw in the CAS. Let's have a look over in the notes. We've essentially got a sort of curve happening in this vague direction. So if we go back up to our circle of transformations. We're looking at this bottom right corner this time. So we're looking at these three options here. Reciprocal transformation to Y, log transformation to Y, or squared transformation to X. All right, so we've got those listed here. The circle of transformations suggests three possible transformations and they're listed here. Perform these three data transformations, in each case giving the equation of the regression line and the coefficient of determination. Okay, let's say equation of regression line, I might edit this, but we need some accuracy here. Let's say coefficients to three significant figures. Okay, I might have to adjust that when I see the numbers, but let's see what we've got. All right, so over to our data, we want to add in, oh, sorry, we want to add in three more columns. The first one we're going to need to do the x squared transformation. So we need a column for x squared data. So this column is equal to our x variable variable squared. Okay. We also need for the second one log of the y value. Okay. So we're going to need, I'll call this column log y. It's going to be equal to, sorry, equal to log base 10 of um, the y variable. So I'm just pressing the variable button, the button above the 9 to get that list of variables. And then the third column we need is 1 on y, so reciprocal of y, recip y. This is going to be equal to 1 divided by y variable. Okay, so we've got all the data we need to be able to make our um, assessment. So back over to the data and statistics page. The first one let's have a look at is the y versus x squared. Okay, so leaving our y variable as it is, let's change the x variable to x squared. Sorry, I don't want to select those data points. There we go. Ah, sorry, let me go back. Let's put it back to X. Let's put our regression line on here first. So menu 4, 6, 2. 
Okay, so there we've got that there. We can see the coefficient of determination is 0.75. So let's now apply the trans first transformation. So changing the x variable to x squared. Okay, so in the equation now, x needs to be replaced with x squared. So the first equation is y equals, now we're going with three significant figures, 0 0.124 plus 0 0.667 times x squared. And the coefficient of determination here is 0 0.89. Let's say coefficient of determination to two decimal places. Okay, so that's the first transformation. Certainly an improvement from the original coefficient of determination of 0.75, um, but I suspect we could probably do a bit better. Okay, so let's change x back to the x variable. We now want to look at x versus log y. So let's change the y variable to log of y. Again, it's certainly more linear. Um, and we, again, have a, a better coefficient of determination here. So remembering when we write down the equation, it's not y anymore, it's log of y. So we've got log y equals three significant figures, 1.09 plus 0 0.0698. Six is the first significant figure there, so you need 698 um, times x. And in this case, r squared is 0.92 to two decimal places. All right, third transformation is the y variable becomes the reciprocal of y. Leave x as it is. Ah, and this one's definitely our best one yet, looking at that coefficient of determination. So again, when writing down the equation, the y variable is no longer y, it's 1 over y. So this will be 1 over y equals three significant figures, 0 0.0532 plus negative, so it's minus 0 0.00. Now again, 3 is the first significant figure there, so it's going to be 317 to three significant figures times x and the coefficient of determination there is 0 0.99, correct to two decimal places. So this one is certainly giving our best model. Okay. Hence, determine the equation for the line of best fit for this data. So the equation for the line of best fit is 1 over y, 0 0.0532 minus 0 0.00317x. Use this equation to predict the value of y when x is equal to 10. Okay, so let's substitute x equals 10 into our equation. Again, take a moment to actually write out what you're doing so that you can earn a consequential mark if you've got your equation wrong or if you picked the wrong equation. Um, okay, so calculator page. Let's solve that equation. My equation is 1 over y is equal to 0 0.0532 minus 0 0.00317 times x and we want to solve that, no sorry not times x, times 10 we want to solve that for y and so y is approximately um, again we need to let's say one decimal place sorry um, y is approximately 46.5, okay, whatever the units are here, there isn't units in this data, but again, does my answer make sense? We're making a prediction for x equals 10, x equals 10 somewhere in here, it looks as though that should be somewhere between around about 37 to 54, and yes, we've got 46.5, so my answer does make sense. Okay, so today's work is from a worksheet, it's in Appendix C of your green booklet.